Hey everyone, it's Colt, and today we're talking about one of the most widely used free resources that you can use to make your websites look less garbagey. I'm talking about the always lovely and incredibly useful Google Fonts. We'll cover how to use Google Fonts, how the fonts work behind the scenes, and also some ways of optimizing our usage of them. All right. So the way that we typically set a font via CSS is through the font family property. The font family property actually allows us to set a font stack, which is just an ordered list of the fonts we'd like to use. So first choice, second choice, third choice, and so on. And then we usually end with our fallback, which is not actually a specific font, but it's a family or a, a generic type of font, like a monospace font or a serif font. And the reason we have to do this, of course, is because fonts are not standardized across different systems. There are some fonts that are considered web safe, that uh, generally all Macs or almost all Macs and Windows machines and uh, mobile devices will have, but that is not the case with the majority of fonts. So we have a couple choices. We can create a font stack and have uh, you know a, a Windows font as one option and then a second font that is similar, that is a Mac font, and then a backup generic type like monospace. And that does work. Uh, and in the past, that was basically what we would do. Well, I shouldn't say what we would do. I didn't really, wasn't around for that, but it was what was done. So uh, if we find something really quickly here that does not work on a Mac, like uh, Perpetua here, if I set that in this code pen, I've got just an H1 and a paragraph. If I style the body and set font family to be Perpetua, my browser or my system does not have that font. It's a Windows font, nothing happens. So then I can set a second choice of a different serif font because Perpetua is serif and I, I don't have to follow those rules, but if I wanna find something kind of similar, uh, what do we have? Maybe Palatino? It's not that similar, but let's see if that works. So we just add our comma there. Okay, so that's Palatino. And then I can add my fallback generic type, which is just a serif font. So if it didn't find Palatino, I think it uses Times or Times New Roman uh, is what Chrome uses by default as a serif font. I'm not positive. But anyway, that is a font stack. That is okay, but we're kind of limited. There aren't many fonts that have broad support across all systems, but even if all of these were supported, it's still a pretty small group of fonts. Um, there's nothing very risky or interesting typographically, not that I know much about typography uh, and or design. I'm terrible with that stuff, but there are so many fonts out there that we might want to use to make a really cool looking web page or to make something uh, just better overall, a better experience. So what you can do is actually include your own font as part of your HTML document. So you can buy different fonts to use. For example, here's a website, myfonts.com, but they are kind of, sh well, I shouldn't say shockingly expensive, but they are very expensive. Let's just find a font here. Uh, that one's kind of nice, Recoletta. And uh, if you look at pricing, well, this one's not too bad. If you want the family of all the different font sizes or weights, like thin and bold and regular, and you want italicized and all of that, it's $129, which doesn't seem bad. I mean, it's expensive, but if you're you know launching a new app, uh, website or some professional product, it's not a huge expense. But then if you read the license, it turns out that you only are allowed 10,000 monthly page views. And if you go past that, they actually track it because I'm pretty sure that they serve the font and keep track of how many times uh, your font is loaded. So if you exceed 10,000 monthly page views, you have to buy another license. I don't know how much it costs, but if you have some you know, relatively successful blog or something where you're getting tens of thousands of views, all of a sudden you're paying $130 a month, if not more. And these are actually relatively affordable fonts. There are some that are hundreds and hundreds of dollars. So that's one option. You download a font, you make sure you have the correct license for it, and you can include that font in your HTML document. Thankfully, we have a much better option for those of us who don't want to spend money on fonts but still want access to lots of fonts, Google Fonts. So Google Fonts is a really amazing resource. According to their own analytics page, Google Fonts fonts have been loaded or viewed over 37 trillion times. So they're really, really commonly used, and that's for good reason. 
Google Fonts consists of almost a thousand different fonts that you can use for free. You can download them or you can choose not to download them and just link to the font and Google will serve the font. It hosts the font for you and your browser will request it when necessary. So you can browse through the different fonts. Uh, it can be a little bit overwhelming if you're just looking at all of them. Generally, and I, I preface this by saying I'm not a typography guy, generally uh, I'll narrow down based off of what I'm looking for. So if I'm looking for a display font, like a, a heading font potentially, you could start with that and then you could sort by trending or most popular. You can also look at featured where they have some nice articles about different fonts that they suggest, or I guess here's a featured collection called Plex by IBM. They sometimes will pair things together, or here are some high impact fonts. Most of these are a bit dramatic, but maybe you'll find something you like. Uh, and if all else fails, just go with the most popular. And if we just look at all most popular fonts, let's get them all back in here. Is it still Roboto? Yeah. Roboto for years has been the most popular Google font alongside Lado and Montserrat and Open Sans. Um, I'll probably just use some of those. So why don't we go with, uh, let's take Montserrat. I'm going to use this. So once you click on a font, you can type some text like, hello everyone, and uh, see a little preview of the different font weights and the italicized versions. So every single one of these lines here is actually a different font itself that you would have to load. Um, so if you don't need italicized light and extra light and extra light italics and all of that, if you just need a regular font weight or a bold, then you should only select the ones that you need. Otherwise, you are unnecessarily loading a whole bunch of stuff. So let's go with thin. I always like a thin font weight and a regular right there, 400, and then a bold at 700 and I can remove them at any point if needed. I can download the fonts, which I'm not going to do. I'm just going to link to them using Google's hosting. So all I need to do is click on embed and then copy either this link tag, which I can start with there. This is a link tag, just like you would link to a, a CSS style sheet. And in code pen, it's going to probably yell at me for putting this in the body. You're supposed to put this up in the head of your document. And in CodePen, this whole thing is the body. I don't even have to type body, it's just there. Anyway, I've got a link tag. Notice that it is linking to this URL, fonts.googleapis.com, family equals Montserrat, weight 100, 400, 700. And then if we look at how I'm supposed to use it, it tells me set font family to be Montserrat. And then as your backup, have the generic type of sans serif or sans serif. So let's do that. I'll set, uh, should I do everything? I think I'll just do the H1 to start. So H1 font family, and then Montserrat. And there we go. We are getting that font and uh, it looks decent. It looks better than what we had before without it, at least in my opinion. And I'll change the font weights to be 100. I like the lighter fonts or maybe 400. Let's see how that looks. Why am I doing pixels? It's just 100. Yeah, maybe we like that or we could go with 400. But those are the only weights we have, 1, 4, and 700. So if I tried to do 200, it's going to look exactly the same as 100. But we probably don't need a whole bunch of different weights. Uh, maybe we'll start with this. We might end up going back to 400. Again, I don't really know what I'm doing with typography. So that's one font. That is Montserrat. And often we'll have a different font for headings than for the body text or uh, blocks of text. So let's go find another font that we might like. And I'm not going to be very creative. I might just go with one of the most popular ones. How about Open Sans, Sans? Is it? I mean, I don't know. I know in French it's Sans, but it sounds a little pretentious. Whatever. Okay. So I'm going to select this one. Um, let's go with light once again. I'm not going to bother with italics and regular. And if I go over to my little shopping cart, which is not really a shopping cart, I can download all of the fonts at once. And if I did download them, I would just link to them with a link tag. It's just a, a file 
or multiple files that I would link to. But instead of that, I'm just going to link to uh, Google's version like I did earlier. And if I go to embed, what you'll see is that I get one link tag. And this link tag now includes two different fonts, Montserrat and three weights, and then Open Sans at uh, two different weights. So I now have access to two different fonts, assuming that this works and Google servers are up and everything. That's one potential problem with using uh, a Google font or any sort of hosted font. But that's why we always provide some sort of backup. At least we can control the general font uh, generic type if we want sans serif or serif or monospace to try and control the experience even when things go wrong. So I'm going to set the paragraph here to have font family of what did we go with open sans okay and i think i'm going to do font weight of 100 as well yeah that looks all right and uh we should also use sans serif as the backup in this font stack in case that does not load nothing should change at this point let's see what it looks like if i use 400 for the h1 yeah i think that looks good all right, so we've got our fonts going. That is the basics of Google Fonts. What I'd like to show you now is how this works. All right, so behind the scenes, Google Fonts is pretty nifty. I wanna show you uh, a couple things to help you optimize your usage. I have a separate page. I'm not using CodePen for this demo because CodePen has its own fonts that it needs to make CodePen. Uh, it has its own Google Fonts and it's kind of complicated if I try and uh, distinguish between our fonts and CodePen's fonts. So I have a new empty file or almost empty HTML file. I have an H1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, six different headings. Now what I'm going to do is go over to Google Fonts. I'm going to use Railway, another very common font. And I'm going to select a whole bunch of font weights. 100, 200, 300, 400, 500, 600, and 700. Uh, I might even just stop at 600. Then in my sidebar, I will click to embed this link, copy that over, put this in my index HTML. All right, so before I even use this font, I'm not actually using Railway. I do have an app.css, but I'm not using this font anywhere. So before I use that, let's take a look at what we get. What does that URL give us? If I went to this URL myself, copy that, I'll just visit this URL. It actually gives me a CSS file. And this CSS file consists of a bunch of font face declarations. We're not really gonna go into font face here. Essentially, there's a bunch of stuff in here. There's more than six font face declarations because we have Latin versions and Latin EXT extended. I actually don't really understand exactly how this all works. All right, well, I ended up Googling this after I recorded this video. It turns out that there are multiple character sets, uh, including Latin and Latin Extended. Latin includes all the characters needed for most of the Western European languages. You can see a full list here. So there are certain special letters and characters, like uh, the different accents for French uh, and German and that sort of thing. And then Latin Extended includes characters for other languages, like Hawaiian, Hungarian, Kazakh, Kurdish, uh, you can see a full list of Latin extended characters here. Anyway, that's the, the mystery solved. I guess it's not really a mystery. I just didn't know about it. Back to the video. What you will see is that we have font weight of 100. We have a URL. This is where the actual font is. If I went to this URL right here, this is the file. If I request this, I just downloaded that font. So it is a, in this case, a WOFF2 file. I think it's web open font face. I might have completely made that up. Google Fonts will serve different types, different file types, depending on what your browser will support. So it's pretty smart. Anyway, so we've got font weight 100, then 200 here. These are for 300. These are for 400. But what's interesting is that if I'm not using any of those fonts, if I go back to my demo here, I'm going to open up the network dev tools and refresh the page. You'll see that this CSS file is loaded from Google Fonts, but none of the actual font URLs have been requested. So at no point did I use those fonts, any of the font weights, so uh, we didn't actually need to make a request for that resource. But now if I go back to my code and I just set 
font family on the whole body to be railway like that and I do the same thing again I'm going to refresh the page we get a whole bunch of new requests every single one of these is to get a different weight of that font and I can actually preview it here so we're requesting each of these URLs this URL to download that first font it's right here actually I downloaded it to my machine but our browser is doing the hard work then we've got this one then we've got railway light railway regular each one of those has to be requested we can get a preview of the font uh, if we go here so we've got I think 100 200 300 400 500 and 600 because I am using them here so what this shows us is every single weight uh, as well as if we added font styles like an italicized version of different weights each one of those is going to increase the load time the number of requests that need to be made now this isn't all that substantial here it happens pretty quickly and actually Google fonts are cached in your browser so you can reuse them across different web pages if you've been to a website that uses railway from Google fonts you will have railway in your browser I don't know when they expire but they're in there the point is that you should try and keep the number of fonts and within each font the number of weights to a minimum if you don't need them then don't use them now one quick optimization that's pretty cool that Google fonts now supports is we can actually narrow down the characters that we are asking for if we don't need the entire font, right we're getting the entire font face here for each one of these weights if I had a particular font just for the logo I don't have a logo but if I had some font that was only used for a logo uh, that was a couple letters long or a couple numbers or whatever and I wasn't reusing it anywhere else on the page suppose that I was worried about my page loading on uh, slower mobile devices with really poor networks or old internet connections where each additional font at 13 kilobytes is it's not massive by any means but uh, it can definitely make a difference if we have lots and lots of fonts so what we can do is thanks to a pretty nifty feature of Google fonts is specify a very limited character set that we actually want if we were just making a, a logo or uh, some header that's always the same I don't need the full set of characters I can only ask for those characters so in this kind of trivial example I've got hello repeated I don't need any of the other characters in a font so I'm going to set in this request or in this URL right here Google is expecting or it will accept a parameter called text and then I'm going to just set it equal to hello so whatever I pass in here uh, it does need to be URL safe so if you have spaces and other special characters you need to escape them or format them for a URL but anyway if I just ask for those characters that's the text I need we'll take a look one more time 13 kilobytes for each one of those fonts now if I refresh the page we're talking about what 900 bytes basically 14 times smaller now we only are getting those characters if we look at one of these fonts look at the preview <laughs> you'll see that it's just uh, E H L and O that are actually in this font everything else is just showing up as like a I think it's just how the Chrome DevTools displays it it's not a complete font it's a partial font which is why it's 14 times smaller so that's a kind of cool optimization that you can make with Google fonts although I'm gonna get rid of that so that we can use all other characters if necessary all right so that's pretty much it for Google fonts a incredibly useful resource it's amazing that it's free so many different fonts almost a thousand it's as simple as shopping for the ones you like putting them in your little cart embedding or downloading them if you prefer to download them uh, or just embedding the link you could also embed it in your CSS I prefer to do a link tag and then you can use it inside of your CSS alrighty so a pretty awesome resource much much better than using uh, native fonts and trying to build entire applications in Arial and Times New Roman over and over and over so thank you to Google for Google fonts if nothing else Google fonts is a great resource that's free as always thank you for watching thank you for enduring me and my videos if you make it this far uh, leave some comments positive loving comments of course and uh, consider subscribing if you're not already please most importantly share uh, this playlist or the first video in this course with any complete beginners that you know anybody who is bored looking for something to do uh, recently unemployed sitting around at home quarantining whatever it is please consider sharing thank you 
stay safe, wash your hands, stay sane. And that's it for me. I will uh, see you guys soon. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye.